Let's be made known unto God. And I tell you, it's good to know him this morning, to know that he is alive, know that he answers prayer. I've got two preacher friends this morning that are facing surgery soon. Brother Mitchell will be facing surgery soon. We don't know exactly when yet. I didn't hear back from Brother Mitchell. I talked to him Friday. He went down seeing the specialist. There's a, a mass on the backside of his pancreas. And the way Brother Mitchell told me, they're doing things nowadays that used to, they couldn't do. So please pray for Brother Mitchell. And then Brother Danny Sykes has a kidney removed in the morning. And I love Brother Danny. I still call him my pastor. Everybody needs a pastor, amen. And uh, Brother Danny has been a fine, fine pastor to me and my family. And we joined at Oak Glen when I was with Rock of Ages and were members there for 10 years. If you have your Bibles this morning, I would like for you to turn with me, please, to the book of Acts. Acts chapter number 17. Acts chapter number 17. I do thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit of God. I thank God this morning for his word. And I'm going to say some things this morning that may not be popular in the land, but it's still the truth. I, I believe with all of my heart that uh, what we need in these days is the truth of the word of God. And I believe the truth will stand when everything else has fallen. And uh, we want to look at this together. In the book of Acts, chapter 17, let's begin reading um, in verse number uh, 28. Acts chapter 17, we'll begin reading in verse 28. Our text will be found in verse 31. The Bible said, for in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Let me make a statement. God gave me a statement a little while back. It's been several years now. But a, a lot of people are promoting the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. Let me just say this to you. We are God's creation, all of us, through our first birth. But beloved, the only way you can be God's children is through a second birth. We are God's creation. We were not created in the image of a monkey. We were created in the image of God. And we are God's creation through our first birth. But we can only be God's children through a second birth. You must be born again, the Bible said. The Bible said in verse 29, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Listen, repentance is a Babel doctrine. There are people today that are trying to say that you've added works to God's plan of salvation. But beloved, listen, you can't repent without God. You can't even believe without God. I just read a text that says you can't even breathe without God. Amen. And so God is in the midst. The Bible said, because he hath appointed a day, I want you to look at this now, in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, wherefore he hath given assurance unto all men in case you're wondering who that man is, look at the last part, and that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. Others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them, howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed, which uh, among the which was Dionysius and Arapagite, and a woman named Damaris, or Damaris and others with them. If correctly read, uh, that's uh, several verses here in, in Acts chapter 17. I guess that'd be verse number 28 down through verse 34. Pray with me. Father in heaven, thank you this morning for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for the God of the word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit of God. 
Thank you, Lord, for the Son of God, the Lord Jesus. And Father, we're glad this morning, Lord, that we have this opportunity, this privilege. Many men have died, Lord, and given their all, given their life, that we could have this liberty and this freedom in the United States of America. Thank you, God, that we don't have to hide our Bible. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to hide the church. Lord, help us to be a light, a bright and light, a shining light on the hill. Help it not to be hid. Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, speak to our hearts. Amen and amen. What I want to preach about this morning, if God will help me, and if I don't get done, then I'll just go on into it tonight too. But I want to preach about the highest court in the land. The highest court in the land. When you say that to the average individual in America, they begin immediately to think of the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Or some of the initials would say SCOTUS. And they say that's the highest court in the land. But let me just say this this morning. The Bible said in Chronicles, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then... The word of God said, will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. I want you to know this morning, there's a court in the land that's higher than the Supreme Court of the United States of America. And I'd like to magnify some truths this morning concerning this court. The Bible said here in this verse, in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he hath ordained. Every nation, every people, every tongue is gonna to give an account to the Lord Jesus one day after a while. The Bible said at that, uh, the name of Jesus, every knee's gonna bow, every tongue is gonna to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I'm sure that you're aware this morning uh, that uh, there's recently been a vacancy in the Supreme Court that was, uh, the vacancy was, uh, uh, it will take place officially at the end of July. Justice Kennedy has stepped down. And uh, listen, I'm not gonna say things this morning that are political, but I'm gonna say things this morning that are biblical, that are scriptural. Uh, beloved, listen, Justice Kennedy was the swing vote in same-sex marriage. Beloved, let me just say this. In the Supreme Court of the United States of America, they might have said and voted that that's okay, five to four. But I want you to know there's only one vote in the Supreme Court of heaven. And God said in this book that it's an abomination in the sight of God. And beloved, I want you to know this morning that there is a court, the highest court in this land. It's not one that you can visit here on earth, but it is one that you and I will stand before one day when we leave this world. It is one that our politicians will give an account to one day. It is one that every preacher will give an account to one day. It, ever, it is one that every child of God will give an account to one day. And it is one that every sinner will give an account to one day after a while. Uh, we'll have to stand before the judge of the universe, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and give an account. Uh, I want to give you some things, beloved, this morning. I just went back and looked up a few things things and just try to maybe just introduce the message this morning. There's so much on my heart, so much on my mind. Uh, uh, beloved, listen, our country is swiftly headed for a boiling point. I mean the temperature is rising. Are you listening to me, amen? Uh, and beloved, listen, it's not a physical warfare that's going on. It's a spiritual warfare. Are you listening to me? It's concerning right and wrong. Beloved, we're living in a day when evil is called good and good is called evil. But I want you to know before the highest court in the land, good is still good and evil is still evil. Sin is still sin and righteousness is still righteousness. And beloved, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one, beloved, listen, he's not 
not the swing vote. He is the vote. Amen. Are you listening to me? Our beloved, listen. I thank God this morning for what he's given me. But we need help in America. Amen. And our help comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. I want to give you something to think about this morning. Our history is being erased in our school systems. I want to give you a few quotes. John Adams said, you will never know how much it has cost my generation to preserve your freedom. I hope you will make good use of it. Uh, Brother Ralph, uh, you men in this church that's been overseas and fought uh, uh, for the freedoms that we have here in America. Uh, beloved, listen to me. I thank God for those that have given. Listen, those no, some have given, all have given some and some have given all and given their lives even and shed their blood that we might have this liberty. But I don't believe, beloved, listen, rebellion is what our forefathers had in mind. Uh, God didn't set us free to sin. Uh, my friend, he set us free to serve. And the United States of America was once upon a time a country, amen, where you had that freedom to serve the Lord and you had that freedom to serve one another. But we're living in one of the most self-serving generations uh, that we've ever lived in, amen. Oh, beloved friend, think about this. John Adams said, if life so dear or peace so sweet to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery, forbid it, almighty God. I know what course others may take. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Patrick Henry said the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Thomas Jefferson said what we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. Let me just say this, beloved. I'm gonna tell you what's wrong in our generation. We've got a generation of people that don't have any skin in the game. Amen. I'm telling you, beloved, that don't know what it's like to have a young man overseas. Are you listening to me? Beloved, listen, I believe with all of my heart we need to think about what's going on in our country. John Adams said this. He said the general principles on which the fathers achieved independence were the only principles in which that beautiful assembly of young gentlemen could unite. And these principles only could be intended by them in their address or by me in my answer. And what were these general principles? I answer the general principles of Christianity in which all these sects were united and the general principles of English and American liberty. He said, now I will avow that I then believe and now believe that those general principles of Christianity are as eternal and immutable as the existence and attributes of God himself and that those principles of liberty are the unalterable as human nature and our mundane system. I believe with all my heart, beloved, listen, some of our founding fathers had a hold of the truth. Beloved, that it was the God of heaven that gave his blessings to them as they came here and founded this great country. And yet our children in the school system today, our children as they go off to college today are taught that we got here by ourselves. I tell you what we're gonna do if we don't get back to our roots, if we don't get back to our Bible, if we don't get back to the blessings of God. Are you listening to me, beloved? We're gonna lose our freedom, amen. And I believe with all of my heart, it's time for God's people to pray. It's time for God's people to stand. It's time, beloved, listen, not to back up, not to retreat, but it's time to take a stand for righteousness in this generation that we live in. Beloved, listen to me. The liberals are scared to death. Now listen, if you're a liberal this morning, I don't hate you. I love you, but I'm gonna tell you what, I hate what liberals stand for for the most part. Are you listening to me? Listen to me, listen to me. You know why they're so scared? Because there's some decisions been rammed down the American people's throat and they're about afraid that the American people are gonna stand up, that there's gonna be a judge put in place that believes in the Constitution, that don't believe he's there to interpret law. Are you listening to me? Or, or to make law, but he's there to interpret law. And beloved, he, he's there, beloved, to follow the principles that were laid out in the Constitution of the United States of America. I'm just telling you this morning, 
morning, beloved, listen, there are people that are worried and they're, my friend, they're worried sick that some of this stuff that's went on is gonna be reversed. And I say, listen, what have we been praying for for years, amen, that God would turn us around, amen. Man of God stood in this pulpit last Sunday night and said to America, judgment's coming. And I'll tell you, beloved, there's only one thing that's ever kept the judgment of God off of a nation, and that's repentance. That means turn her around. That means go another way. That means, beloved, don't keep going the way you're going, but turn away from that and go towards the things of God. Listen to me this morning, beloved. I believe it's important that you and I understand today What's in the balance? Uh, listen, there's a court that's higher than our land. There's a court that's higher than the Supreme Court. And beloved, listen, the law has already been laid down. It's not gonna change for you. It's not gonna change for me. It's not gonna change for anybody. Are you listening to me this morning? You see, beloved, listen. I, I, listen, I'm not trying to be mean this morning. But I believe a whole lot of people that's causing a whole lot of trouble just needs a real job and they'd have something to do. Amen. Say amen. amen. I'm telling you, beloved, listen, the Bible said if a man don't work, a man shouldn't eat. Amen. You say, do you believe the Bible? That's exactly what I believe, amen. I believe you let a man go hungry and he'd find him a rake. He'd rake leaves, he'd mow grass, he'd wash cars, he'd do something to get him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, amen. And I believe that right now, I told my wife two months ago, everywhere we look, now hiring, now hiring, now hiring, now hiring. I told my wife, I said, honey, I don't believe this is where we are in America. I said, everybody wants to job's got one. Amen. I believe that's where we're at. And then just a few days later, there came out a report on the news. It said there's more jobs available than there are people to fill the jobs. I tell you what, you reform the welfare system and people will get the jobs. Somebody help me. Amen. I believe with all of my heart, beloved, listen, that we as God's people have paid for the drugs, paid for the alcohol. You listen to me long enough. I believe with all of my heart, beloved, listen, that there are people, my dad did this word. Sorry, that's what he called them. He said they're sorry. My daddy would say there's some people wouldn't take a job in a pie factory tasting pie. You say, preacher, what's the matter? I'll tell you what's the matter. We've got away from the principles of the word of God. I believe, beloved, just like Brother Jack used to say, if that rubs your fur the wrong way, turn the cat around because the word of God ain't gonna change for you or me or anybody else in this world. Amen. Years ago, Adrian Rogers, I believe it was 1984, Brother Adrian, pastor of Bellevue Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee, one of the greatest orators of our generation. And a lot of people might not like him, but I like him, I love him. I've heard him preach on sin. Uh, uh, thousands of people sitting there in front of him. He didn't trim the message. He, he, he preached it just like God gave it in the word of God. One thing I really appreciate, brother, brother Adrian, when so many were giving up on the King James Bible, he hung right in there with it all the way to the end, amen. And I appreciated that about brother Adrian. But brother Adrian said this, he said, friend, he said the government cannot give you anything that it does not first take from someone else. Amen. Now listen to me, he said when half the people in a nation get the idea, I don't have to work because somebody's gonna take care of me. And the other half get the idea, what's the use to work because somebody's gonna take it from me. He said that dear friend is about the end of any nation. He said that in 1984. Here we are in the year 2018. I love America. I'll tell you what I believe with all of my heart. We need some young men and some young ladies uh, and some moms and some dads and some mamas and papas uh, that'll not just love America with their tongue that'll love America with their hands, love America with their feet, uh, love America with their heart, uh, love America, beloved, listen, in mind and body and my friend, go to work for the glory of God. Not just in the country, but in the church. A man come to my church one time preaching revival. I never shall forget this. I was sitting there on the front bench like where I was sitting there in front of Brother Gale and that man stood up, Brother Gale, and he said, my church is 100% willing. I'll tell you what, I felt like crawling under the bench. I really did. I said, Lord, I wish I pastored a church like that. He paused for about 10 seconds, then he said this. He said, 10% is willing to work, 90% are willing to let them. I'm gonna tell you something, beloved, listen. There's something for every one of us to do that's saved by the grace of God. How many heard what I just said? There's something for every one of us to do. You say, preacher, I'm up in years, I can't get out. 
If you can dial a telephone, there's something for you to do. If you can dial heaven, that's more important than being able to dial a telephone. Say amen. If you can get a prayer through to God, I'm telling you what, there's no substitute for that. We need some praying people. Amen. We need people, beloved, listen this morning, that'll say, I love my church. I love my country. I love my community. And I'm not gonna let them go to hell without a fight. Amen. Beloved, listen, our country this morning is in trouble. Our country's in trouble. You go back to the founding fathers. Listen to what Thomas Jefferson said. He said, God who gave us life gave us liberty. He said, and can the liberties of a nation be thought secure when we have removed their only firm basis, a conviction in the minds of the people that these liberties are the gift of God. How many believes these liberties are the gift of God? Amen. Man, don't give them to us, beloved. Listen, there are certain unalienable rights. The Bible said here that they are not to be violated, but with his wrath. Indeed, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just and his justice cannot sleep forever. You know what Thomas Jefferson realized? He realized, beloved, that there's a court that you can't see and there's a judge that you can't see and that we're gonna stand in front of him one day after a while and give an account, amen. I'll tell you, beloved friend, listen to me this morning. John Hancock, he was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. He said, resistance to tyranny becomes the Christian and social duty of each individual. Continue steadfast and with a proper sense of your dependence on God. Nobly defend those rights which heaven gave and no man ought to take from us. James Madison said, a watchful eye must be kept on ourselves lest while we are building ideal monuments of renown and bliss, here we neglect to have our names enrolled in the annals of heaven. I'm telling you, beloved, these were some of our founders that realized what's going on down here ain't the most important thing. We're gonna have a stand before the judge over there one day after a while. And beloved, that ought to conduct our conduct and change our conduct as we live in this world. Let me give you a couple of things this morning. I'll come back tonight. I'm telling you, beloved, listen, it's in my heart just to say this. I'm not trying to be political, but I am trying to say this, beloved, listen. There have been some things that have been ordained as okay in the United States of America that are not okay in the court of God. Beloved, listen, I can go all the way back uh, to, the, to the alcohol question. Say amen. Uh, beloved, the Bible said wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. I used to tell the men in prison, why did they call it Budweiser when it never made anybody anything but dumber? Why did they call it Miller High Life when it's not a high life, but it's a low life? Can I get a witness out there from the congregation? Beloved, it doesn't build anybody up. It never built one family up. All it does is tear people down. Uh, why is it, beloved, that we go from one issue to another? You say, well, preacher, uh, they said it's all right to abort the baby. You need to read the book of Psalms. Uh, you need to understand that God's got his eyes on that little baby. And that's not just a blob, but that's a baby. Uh, amen. Uh, and in the eyes of God, it's precious to him. Amen. And here we are. Beloved, now we've gotten so far down the road, we're in a battle now over marijuana. Oh, let's legalize it. Let's get our taxes from it. Let me ask you something. How's that worked out with alcohol? You know, you know somebody ought to just sit down in America and balance the books. Somebody ought to say, here's what we're making off of alcohol and here's what alcohol's costing us. Somebody ought to say, here's what we're making off of the drugs and here's what the drugs are costing us. Somebody ought to say, here's what we're making off of illegal immigration and here's what illegal immigration's costing us. I'm not a real smart fella, but somebody ought to balance the books. And you know what they'd find out if they did? They'd find out that sin has a high price tag. It don't matter if it's legal or not, friend. 
I'm telling you, beloved, sin will cost an individual, sin will cost a family, and sin will cost a nation. Are you listening to me, beloved? It'll cost us, beloved. And I believe with all of my heart, listen, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. That's on the sign. Thank you, Brother Gary. And it's the truth. But if God is our Lord, then we ought to want to walk in righteousness, not unrighteousness. Beloved friend, you see, we've said now, it don't matter whether you're married or not. Yes, come on. Come on. That's exactly right. Amen. And it don't matter if you marry somebody that's the same sex. Amen. There's only one problem with all of this. That's the highest court in the land. Amen. When it comes before the highest court in the land, we're gonna find out that the judge has not changed his mind. Amen. We're gonna find out that the Bible teaches us that thy word forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And beloved, I'm gonna tell you how we're gonna meet that book. We're gonna meet that book. It, by the words will be justified Amen. and by our words will be condemned. We're gonna meet that book one day after a while. Do you know the Bible teaches that all things are open? and naked to whom, listen beloved, listen, the Congress right now is trying their best. I, let me just stop and make a prediction. If Bob Mueller's got anything on the president, about the time we get in the peak of this Supreme Court um, appointment, here it'll come. Mark her down, honey. Desperate measures, uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. I said, you mark her down. I said, if he's got anything. I like what was said last week. If you've got it, put it on the table. That's what I believe ought to be done. Say amen. It is dividing our nation. It is dividing our people. And we need, beloved, to know what went on. Are you listening to me this morning? I believe, listen, if the president's done something corrupt, the president ought to be punished for it. I said if he's done something corrupt, then he ought to be punished for it. But so should the other one that ran and lost. We already know she's done things corrupt. It's public knowledge. Beloved, listen. We can't have law for one group and not for the other group. There's a big cry. It breaks my heart. Listen to me. I'm still preaching. I'm not meddling. I'm talking about the high court. It breaks my heart when I found out that there's a lot of children separated from their parents, but there's a right way to come into this country, even for asylum. And there's a wrong way to come into this country. Now, let me just say something to you. Let me just word it like this. Aaron, come up here this morning. Josh, come up here this morning. Avery, come up here. Uh, not Avery. Jordan, come up here. Aubrey, come up here. You've got 11 grandchildren you get confused too. <laughs> All right. Coming over to my house this week, ain't you? I'm going to work them like dogs. <laughs> they got off easy the last time. This one just cooked for them. The rest of them going to work like dogs. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Preacher goes out here and gets drunk tonight. Listen to me carefully. And I run over an innocent family. I hit somebody on the street. Now I'm guilty of vehicular homicide. You think I'm gonna get to take them home with me? Somebody help me this morning. Is anybody getting the picture? I break the law. Aubrey will have to put her hand on a little glass and talk on the telephone. Amen. Yes. Because we'll be separated. He said, preacher, how do you know about all that? Because I've spent far too much time on the other side of that glass. Am I right, Brother Houston? When you was an a officer, a police officer here in Kingsport and you had to put handcuffs on somebody, their family didn't go to jail with them. Them little kids, as the police officer had to carry them all, was crying, daddy, daddy, daddy. Let me ask you something. If it's that way for the American people, what's wrong Amen. with it being that way for lawbreakers? Amen. Wherever they come from. 
You say, preacher, you done lost your mind. No, I'm trying to help us this morning to see what's at stake. There's a higher court. I'm not the judge, Jesus is. I wish it wouldn't happen. Thank you all. I hope and pray to God that Papa never goes to jail and I hope and pray to God that y'all don't never go to jail. Because if you do, we'll be separated. That's one of the worst things about jail. Let me give you this. It's one of the worst things about hell. You'll be separated forever from your family, from your loved ones, from your friends. You won't even get to look through a glass and talk on a telephone. Outer darkness, tormented day and night, forever and forever. All I'm trying to say this morning is, listen, let me just go back here just a minute and give you this. The highest court in the land is not the Supreme Court. It's the Savior's court. In America, the Supreme Court justices are appointed for life. Until they die or until they retire, that would be their choice. But in the highest court in the land, our judge is eternal. He died once, but he'll never die again. He'll never, Brother Gary, slide over and let somebody else take his seat. Beloved, I don't know about you this morning. Brother Wayne, you minister to those men week after week, and I thank God for you and what you do. Brother, what breaks their heart most of the time more than anything else, they can't see their precious wife. They can't hold their precious babies. And sometimes they were so drunk and so strung out while they was on the street, it didn't matter. But in there, they have to sober up and realize the mistakes. Let me tell you something about hell. It'll be a sobering experience. When that rich man lifted his eyes in hell, he said, oh, Father Abraham, he said, send Lazarus, that he may dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. And then he said this, you can't do that, there's a great gulf fixed, Abraham told him. Then he, then he said this. He said, then send him to tell my five brothers not to come to this awful place of torment. Listen to me this morning. He was sobered up good. He realized then, beloved, what was important. I believe if he had it to do over, he wouldn't have sent Lazarus a biscuit down to the gate or a plate of biscuits down to the gate. I believe he would have sent some servants down there and said, carry that boy up here to my table, just like uh, David did for Mephibosheth. Set him under my table and let him eat. I'm telling you, beloved, this morning, listen, I love the Lord, I love my church, I love my country. Listen, what would you have thought this morning? I'm trying to stir you up. What would you have thought this morning, Brother Sam? That little girl stood there and sung a national anthem and I took a knee. There ought to be enough men in this church to whoop me this morning. Somebody say amen. You know why we're so divided? We've lost sight of the highest court in the land. We've lost sight of the fact that one day We'll stand before him. Beloved, it's not going to matter what was passed in the Supreme Court, what was passed in the Congress. At that time, what's going to matter is what God said in that book. Beloved, listen, I'll get to it tonight. I got to quit. Brother Brian's doing a great job getting through the announcements and getting me started a little earlier. And sometimes it helps and sometimes it don't, Brother Brian. Amen. I got so much on my heart, I can't hardly stand it. I don't know if we understand what's at stake. Our country's at stake. More than that, Brother Richard, our children's at stake. Our children, our grandchildren. We need a revival. 
And we need to just pray. The Bible said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. I'm gonna tell you something, listen to me carefully. Apathy is a wicked way. If you do not vote, this morning ought to be the morning that you decide for the Lord that you're giving up on that apathy and that you're gonna have a voice in what's going on in our country. That you'll find out about the candidates and what they stand for. Somebody help me this morning. Apathy. Well, what will be, will be. That's what's wrong in the church. We've been apathetic way too long. We need to rise up. Stand up for what's right. We don't need to be in anybody's face spitting. Say amen. We don't need to be running people out of a restaurant. How many of you are watching a little bit of the news because we don't like their political affiliation? We're supposed to love one another. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Listen to me carefully. You don't have to like what I'm going to say, but in New York, there's a young lady, 28 years old, that won by about 14 points running against a, a Democrat that had been in office either 10 or 12 years, running on a pure socialist agenda. And, and let me just back up and say this. You say, preacher, you're not supposed to preach politics. I'm just gonna state a fact. I believe, I can say it like that. I believe had Bernie Sanders not been done wrong, I believe he had a real good chance of winning the Democratic nomination. Somebody help me right there. You say, preacher, why are you saying that? Because it's scary to think of the number of people in our country that don't want us to be a country that's capitalist, but want us to be a country that's communist. You say, you shouldn't say that. I did, and we better wake up. We better wake up. I think it's... Um, Brother Brian, when's that meeting start? Is it next Monday, the camp meeting starts, brother? And, and Brother Ralph will be preaching in that meeting. I don't know about it, and I ain't preaching to be like Brother Ralph, but I've been around Brother Ralph long enough to know there'll be some current events come in there. How many knows I told it right, right there? You go to that camp meeting, and you'll probably hear some peak and repeat going on. We need the Lord. If my people, we're gonna have an invitation this morning. If my people, which are called by my name. How many believes America needs a healing? How many believes that the Supreme Court can heal our country? Nah. The highest court in the land can heal our country. The Lord Jesus. Amen. I believe with all of my heart, beloved, listen. I believe with all my heart there's hope. You say, preacher, why do you believe there's hope? Because I'm still living and God is still on the throne. I've seen God with Israel over and over and over judge them for their sin and then they would repent and bless them for their repentance. Judge them for doing wrong and bless them for doing right. I personally believe, beloved, listen, that one of the only things, well, there's two. I'll say it like this. It's kept the judgment hand of God off of our country thus far, two things. Number one, our stand with Israel. God told Abraham, I'll bless them that bless thee. I'm gonna tell you, in the last administration, Brother Rose, I got nervous a few times. Amen. I'm just gonna say it like that. Yeah. We need to bless the Lord and bless the land of Israel, amen. But listen, that and the remnant of God's people that are in this country, this country's got some trouble. I, I'll tell you what was said a little while back. I was down, and I, I wanted to say it like this before, before I go any further. This, this country's also got a, a remnant of wonderful people, God-fearing people people that are praying, people that are living for God, people that are studying their Bible. Sister Kay is gonna get me some of those little red New Testaments and they got 15 outlines in them and me and the grandsons and 
we're going to sit down and study that, Brother Thurman, together. And try to get them a good foundation to build on because getting saved ain't the end. That's just the beginning. We want them to grow. Boy, wouldn't it be a blessing if one day one of them was standing where I'm standing and thundering the precious old word of God. God has to do that. Papa can't do that. But I tell you what we can do when we build on that foundation. I was down at funeral home a while back. Uh, <clears throat> Brother Don McCann preached for us on a Sunday night. Y'all probably remember that. I was involved in a funeral, and Kent McLaughlin said to me, he said, who's preaching for you tonight, brother? I said, Brother Don McCann. Brother Kent said, Lord have mercy. Said he'll split that church right down the middle. <laughs> you know what I told Brother Kent? I said, I'll take either half. They're both good. I'm blessed to be standing among God's people. And I want us this morning, come and pray for our country. The Bible instructs us, now listen to me, don't matter whether you agree with the politics, but it instructs us to pray for those that are in authority over us. That's not always easy to do on either side, say amen. It's easier to pray for somebody you agree with. But God instructs us to pray for those that are in authority, for kings, amen, over us. And let's remember the verse, if my people, some of you have loved ones that are lost, be a good morning just to come and say, oh God, don't let us be separated forever. Let's, Independence Day, July the 4th. Brother Brian, did, I, did we put an announcement in there about Tuesday night prayer meeting? Is it gonna be on Tuesday night? Okay, good, brother, amen, amen. But, but I, we thought that would be good. Actually, Brother Arnold brought it to my attention as he communicated with me, and I, and I think that'd be awesome. I was wondering, you know, about families getting together and having cookouts and things like that. We celebrate Independence Day, the, 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 the day that our country became independent of England. But let me tell you, there's a movement in America, listen to me carefully, that wants another Independence Day, Brother Wayne. They want us to be independent of God. Amen. They want us, they want God completely out of our schools, completely out of our... Oh, listen, I would love to see the day when the Ten Commandments were going back up. <laughs> Brother Randall, I was over in Wise for five and a half years pastoring. Me and my boy, we like to shoot a bow and arrow. We shot in tournament archery together. He was 10 years old at the time. <clears throat> and... Uh, I had some verses, scripture verses, plaques, just simple wooden frame with glass and for by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. But now God commandeth all men everywhere to repent, just verses. And I put them up all in the clubhouse. There must have been eight or 10 of them. Eight or 10 verses just round in the archery clubhouse. I left over there, and my nickname over there, I don't think many people knew my name. They called me Preacher Man. Everybody just called me Preacher Man. And I left over there, and they decided one day they were going to remodel the clubhouse. And they were going to paint and fix up and patch and just remodel the clubhouse. And one of the fellas, they're getting ready to finish up and one of the fellows picked up that stack of those verses and he said, we're just throw these away. And another man, Brother Dwayne, a lost man, he said, huh? He said, the preacher man put them up there. He said, wipe them off and put them back. We don't know who we might have be having an impact on. I left a young man up there he let me witness to him. He was one of my best friends. He was not an ungodly man. He was just a lost man. Had more morals than a lot of church people. But I left him and I said to him, Charlie, you're gonna get saved one of these days. I said, I'm praying for you. One day the phone rang 
He said, hello, brother. I said, Charlie, is that you? He said, yeah, 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 it is. I said, Charlie, it's Tuesday night. I said, you got saved, didn't you, son? He said, yeah, 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 I did. I say, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't retreat. Let's keep going for God. Let's have a song of invitation. Let's stand to our feet. If it's in your heart, come pray for our country, pray for our church, pray for our community. I beg you to do that. Pray for your lost loved ones. If it's just in your heart to come and thank God for his goodness. Thank God for our country. Ask God to help us not to be independent of God, but to be dependent upon the God of heaven. He's still on the throne. The Supreme Court is not the highest court in the land. It's the highest one you can see. But there's one above the Supreme Court. And we're going to face that judge one day after a while. If you're here this morning and lost, take that first step. If you'll take that first step, I'll tell you what God will do.